Have you tried out these animation styles in Pika Labs yet? Starting with the Pixar style, which is known for its 3D renders that blends realism and stylization. It's one of the most consistent styles in Pika Labs. It's very flexible and generates a wide variety of different videos. These water elemental renders turned out especially well. You can add in the words Unreal Engine at the end of your prompts to generate these cinematic shots that look like they were rendered using Unreal Engine's 304. The keywords 3D render and animation produce a similar effect as Unreal Engine and generate videos that look like they came straight out of a PlayStation game trailer. Referencing specific video games like Grand Theft Auto also works well since GTA is one of the largest video game datasets that's commonly used for video AIs. Putting the word cinematic at the front of your prompts can be used to generate some additional dynamic motions for your 3D renders. The really nice surprise was the ability to render Lego style figures in Pika. I guess there's enough Lego games and movies out there to get these datasets. I'll definitely be using this a lot. Now, AI video generators are still very limited based on their datasets. So for some prompts like Star Wars, it's easy to generate Lego style videos. But if we wanted to generate a video of something like a woman at a park, Pika has a much harder time generating Lego style videos since that's a much less common combination in their datasets. So if you want to get the best results, you have to use a combination of subject and animation styles in your prompt that would occur frequently in natural video datasets out there. Next up is the pixel art style. And it has a nice unique aesthetic. These 3D assets look like they came straight out of Minecraft or the old MapleStory games. Let's move on from video games and 3D renders. Anime style animations now look really nice in Pika 1.0. Although the only anime style keyword I was able to test that generates consistent results was Studio Ghibli, which is one of the most popular anime studios and has these simple but charming characters. I tried out other keywords like retro, vintage, or madhouse animations, but the videos rendered didn't really match the keywords very well. The horror anime style can also be used to generate these videos with darker colors and scarier looking figures. If you're more into western cartoons, Disney style will give you that classical look that reminds you of your childhood favorites like The Lion King or Cinderella. Here's where it gets really cool. If you still remember the Chicken Run movies, you'll recognize these stop motion animations. It's kind of like a 3D flipbook where the 3D figures are manually manipulated frame by frame. Claymation is a specific style of stop motion film and it uses clay figures as the subjects. The stop motion style of videos do tend to get pretty distorted though. You can also animate these plastic action figures that look like they were made in the 2000s. It seems to work pretty well with a variety of different subjects and environments. Barbie dolls are another type of toy figure you can try animating. As of now, Pika Labs is still pretty hit or miss with AI videos, so make sure you retry each prompt a bunch of times before moving on. Also, you gotta use the camera motions feature to move the camera around, which generates much more natural looking videos. For example, in these bird's eye view videos, the rotation motion works especially well. If you see a lot of warping or deformation in your video, you need to use the negative prompt feature which lets you enter keywords of stuff that you don't want to happen in your video. These words would include blurry, deformed, distort, ugly, warped, and your videos will be much cleaner. This is a negative prompt that I used for all the videos shown in this tutorial. Now for more realistic videos, you can try photorealistic, which tells Pika you want something that looks like a real video. HD video can work as well. But also think about the situation where the video will be taken from. GoPro camera data is pretty common and so the GoPro keyword can be used to pretty good effect for outdoor action shots. Asking for a documentary is another way to produce realistic looking videos, especially for nature and animals. It's possible to date videos by adding years like 1920s to your prompt, which generates these really old looking videos that are in black and white and have some flickering between the frames. 
The keyword vintage also produces old videos, although they do tend to have some color in them, as opposed to being just black and white. One of the coolest animation styles is using tilt shift photography, which uses shifted camera lens to produce the illusion of miniature models. I found that this works really really well for landscapes and cityscapes and creates a tiny world, but not so well for other subjects like animals or people. Time lapse videos are also possible, just include the word time lapse at the end of the prompt. We need to discuss camera angles, which has a huge effect on the perspective the video is seen from. Prompts that include bird's eye view, aerial shot or drone shots places a camera in the air far above the subjects. Like you're taking a video from a drone. This is great for landscapes or if you want to zoom out from your subjects. The close up shot does the opposite and brings the camera in front of your subjects with a focus on their faces. High angle shots place the camera above the subject and tilts down so that you're looking at them from above. It makes people look smaller and weaker and shows subjects in a vulnerable position. The low angle shot will place the camera below the subject so you're looking up at them. It makes people look larger and stronger relative to you and is useful for displaying a more intimidating presence. Wide angle lens pulls the camera back and emphasizes the surroundings of the subject. It's great for showcasing the surrounding landscape. Finally, you can put the camera behind your subjects like you're following them around somewhere. Controlling colors in Pika Labs is pretty hit or miss. The results are inconsistent right now, but it's still worth trying if you want to maintain a consistent theme in your videos. Black and white is pretty self-explanatory. It's a timeless classic and never really goes out of style. I tend to prefer darker, desaturated colors myself because they feel more impactful. But if you want a friendlier and happier vibe, you can use pastel colors, which has these baby blues, pinks, and greens for a softer, easygoing tone. Vintage muted colors work well for retro videos. Try using 1960s and vintage muted colors in your prompts. You can add additional flair to your videos by referencing specific movie genres and directors. I did have some fun generating AI videos using the horror movie genre. I don't really watch horror movies myself, but it is cool to see what types of videos that Pika associates with the horror genre, even if they creep me out a bit. Some notable directors that have distinct styles include Wes Anderson, who uses a lot of pastel colors and vintage aesthetics with less motion in his frames, or Christopher Nolan, who is known for his sci-fi films that have darker, more muted colors. If you want to see more guides for Pika Labs, hit the subscribe button. Also, if you want help getting started with Pika Labs, go check out my complete comprehensive beginner's guide over here.